scared for my life. I don't know if I'll walk outside or if I'll be in a restaurant and be followed home. I don't know um, if, 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 if I'm safe because the people who abused me know where I stay currently. And it helped me immensely to share this with the people around me. But now I've gotten to a point where I'm ready to, to speak about it like this publicly because a lot of people will say, you know, why now? Why did you keep quiet all this time? Why didn't you have them arrested? Well, I kept quiet all of this time because I felt so much shame for being in that situation and being so powerless. I hate feeling powerless. I felt anger towards myself in some parts because I felt like there was something that I must have done to cause this to happen. And then in parts because I couldn't help my partner to change or to see a better path. And then in other parts because I knew that they were continuing to, they would get support, people would understand, people would justify this, people would be on their side. As for not getting them arrested, well, I regret it. I do. I didn't get my abusers arrested for many reasons. And this is common amongst victims. I've come to learn that I'm not the only one. And there are many, many reasons. To share some of mine, and I'm sharing these only because, you know, I want you to understand. And if, you, if you're going through anything that is even remotely similar, you have to understand that you are not alone. You're not the only person who's been through the situation. And there are, there are ways, there are ways to deal with it. There are ways to deal better with it. I hope that someone out there will be listening and knowing to walk away and to take action. Some of the reasons I didn't get my abusers arrested were I thought, oh, he's mentally unstable. He won't be okay. He's going to get worse in jail. I thought, I have a child with him. What will I tell my child one day that I got his father arrested? I didn't want to think of that day coming. I thought I've been to police stations before and I find them to be toxic environments where humiliation, sensitivity to such issues there is no sensitivity to such issues at any police station that I've ever been to. And a lot of people know, will relate. Um, there's no human touch. There's no understanding. Sometimes you will go into a police station and there won't even be a female that you can talk to. The humiliation I speak of is not only being humiliated within that police space where I would have to tell a personal story, a deeply personal and hurtful story, but I considered the humiliation that I would face after reporting the case, when it goes to court, when the newspapers are involved, when the tabloids are involved, again, when it's all just entertainment for everybody. I didn't want my personal life to be anyone's entertainment. Furthermore, I felt like leaving was enough. I thought, well, I'm out of the relationship. I've survived. I'm proud. I'm victorious. I'm happier without the person. And so that is enough. I have to say I am flawed in that regard. I don't think it's enough to just leave. I do think it's important to take action. I do think it's important to report the cases because this is why men who are abusers walk around freely in our communities, in our schools, in our workplaces. They live amongst us and they thrive amongst us because there are no repercussions and there are no consequences most of the time for abusers, especially in South Africa. Our justice system does not go all the way through to prosecution. Case dockets go missing and we hear of this all the time and every time you hear about a story like that, you imagine taking yourself through the humiliation of reporting a case and opening a case only for it to disappear, only for him to not be prosecuted, to come back into society and be integrated and be treated with kid gloves 
and be understood and be cared for and to have a voice. Abusers have very loud voices in our society because there are no consequences for their actions. In hindsight, do I wish I reported the case and followed through with it? Yes. Do I wish I had my abusers arrested? Yes. But I just didn't have the energy to go through trying to follow through with their punishment. I was so low in terms of my self-esteem. I was not taking care of myself. I was just going through every day as if let me just finish this. Let me just show up for the show. Let me just go to the shoot. Let me just carry on with life only to go home and be miserable. My energy was so depleted, fighting, fighting the actual abuse. And then after I had left the relationship, my energy was spent fighting to heal. I wanted to heal so badly. I wanted to forgive. I wanted to, to be a mother who would not raise my child in bitterness and anger. I was so determined to fall in love with myself again. And thank God I dedicated myself to that mission because I have never been happier. My child is happy. My niece who I'm also raising is a happy girl. I never will have to endure a day where my niece is seeing me victimized like that. My son is seeing me victimized like that. I would rather explain to my son why I made the choices that I made than to have him see me being beaten up and bear the risk of him in turn learning abuse as a behavior, as a coping mechanism, as a way of life. I refused for that to happen. I also have come to a decision that my son doesn't have to hear my story from everywhere or everyone else except me. I will always be honest. In fact, every sphere of my life from now on, I'm living honestly, I'm living openly, I'm living freely, I'm living positively. And if you expect anything less from me but the truth, please, <laughs> you're not going to get it. <laughs> I'm glad I've made the decisions that I've made. And going through these circumstances has made me realize my power. I'm thankful to God that so I'm thankful to God that I found the courage to leave I'm thankful that I had options I was able to move away and still be financially secure and still be able to raise my kid in a safe environment where I have food every day and a roof over my head. I know that many women suffer in silence because they don't have those options. I want to implore you, if you're in an abusive relationship, walk away. Women are dying every day we read of intimate partner violence ending in death. Not in tears, not in heartbreak, in death. Save your life, save yourself, and leave. There are organizations out there, there are people out there, individuals, who would be willing to help you if you just tell someone and leave. Make an attempt to save yourself and save your children and grow in love May we not be the generation where our children watch for years as we get abused. May we be a generation that chooses safe spaces over toxic relationships, over obegezela.
over the achievement of marriage. May we choose ourselves so that we can flourish. So coming to why I felt like I needed to get this out of my chest. Firstly, I don't want my son to ever hear my story from the mouths of others, whether I'm in his life or not. When he's old enough to understand, um, he'll be able to watch this video and know exactly what happened and why I did what I did and why I made the decisions that I made. He will know and he will hear from me. Secondly, I've never been happier. I mean, I'm flourishing. I'm glowing. I'm happy. I have sisters, friends, cousins, aunts around me who offer me so much support, even work colleagues, you know, who offer me so much support that I wish I had told them sooner. I wish I told them the first time it happened. Because if I had, um, it might it might not have gotten to a point where I'm scared for my life. I walk on eggshells in my own house, in my own home, and to a point where even the kids see me getting getting hit. It might not have gotten to that point if I spoke sooner. The sooner you leave, the better. So, if you ever wonder where I stand on gender-based violence, know this. I stand with women. I stand with victims. I believe black women first before asking what they did to deserve it. We all deserve joy. We all deserve happiness. We all deserve a glow up. And if you know you are not where you are meant to be, you are in a toxic space, try to ask for help. Try to speak out and see how beautiful life can be when you choose yourself over protecting an abusive partner. It's never a bad idea. This video that I'm making now, I'm not going to take follow-up questions on it. I'm not gonna take interviews about my personal life. I'm just putting out my, my story, my truth out loud so I can free myself. So that everybody who who thinks that um, I don't know how to speak for myself can can know that I can and I can stand up for myself and I have and that's why I survived and that's why I left I survived I left I flourish I'm happy going forward my story will be told in my music and only in my music I'm not going to take interviews about this about anything, any aspect of my personal life going forward. My music is going to tell my stories right now. And this, hence the album, um, being called My Side of the Story. If you ever wonder where I stand,